Over the past few weeks, I've received quite a few emails asking how I go about designing and printing parts on my MakerBot Replicator 2. This multi-week case is an example. So I wanted to do something a little different today and walk you guys through the process that I use for designing and printing parts. Now, I'm by no means an expert. I kind of hack away in the garage, but I just wanted to share some of my findings from over the past year. So I've decided to start with something basic, and you may be wondering what this is. A couple of years ago, we received a magic kit, and my oldest daughter, of course, was asking where one of the pieces was, and it's a magic coin paddle. Now, I don't know if you've seen these guys. I'll demonstrate how it works in a minute, but in this video, I wanted to demonstrate, since it's a relatively easy thing to design, we'll go ahead and walk you through that process. This is how this thing works, and I'm not claiming to be a YouTube mag magician. This video is all about design, but I want to show you. It's okay, so here you see the bottom of the paddle, then the top, bottom again, top, and here comes the magical part. And there you go, we have a quarter. Okay, so we are in Rhino 3D, and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw a circle for the face of the paddle. So I'm gonna use the circle command, and you'll notice that I'm gonna go ahead and click snap, so that's gonna snap right in the middle, and it's going to ask me for a radius. But what I actually wanna do is I'm gonna click diameter, because we know the diameter of a circle. I already looked it up on Wikipedia. It's about 24.25 millimeters, but I'm gonna go ahead and make that di diameter 25 just to account for a little bit of shrinkage uh, when we print with PLA. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and work on the handle of the paddle. So let me go ahead and make top view our main view. And let's make this handle about eight millimeters wide. So this is the center axis, and we're going to count four off of that, so one, two, three, four. So I'm going to type in rectangle, and I'm going to click here, so we got one, two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and hit eight and hit enter. That gives us our width. Now, as you notice, as I pull down in the bottom right, this y direction is a negative direction, so we want this handle to be about two inches long, which is roughly 50 millimeters, so I'm going to put a minus 50 in there, hit enter, and now we have what looks to be the basic outline of the paddle. Okay, let's go ahead and switch back and let me show you perspective view. So you can see we're still working in 2D here. Now I'm gonna go back to top view and let's keep in mind that this is the size of the quarter and what we actually wanna have is we wanna have uh, some sort of border or edge. So a uh, nice command that we can use here is called offset. And we're gonna go ahead and offset that about three millimeters. And you can see as I move around the edge, it offsets it by three. And what's cool, if I go on in the inside, it'll offset the inside by three. So I'm gonna go ahead back to the outside, click, and now our quarter will sit in here and this will be our edge around. Now let's go ahead and select our outside circle and our rectangle. I'm gonna hold shift and then click again. And we're gonna use the command extrude curve. These lines are known as curves. And let's go ahead and extrude that six millimeters. So I'm just gonna hit six, type six and hit enter. And you can see our extrusion here. Now let's actually make it look a little better and we'll go to shaded view. So kind of see what we got. We're starting to look a little bit like a paddle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our insets where the quarter can sit in on this side or on this side. Now you'll notice this was our original curve or circle and what we're going to do is we're going to use the make hole command and we're going to cut away two millimeters of each side so we'll take away two on each side and that will leave us uh, two in the middle so it's at telling me to select a surface so I'm going to go ahead and select that surface that we're going to cut in now whenever you run a command you'll see a little pop-up like this that's very useful and I'm gonna deselect delete input, which means it will keep our circle in place after we do the cutout. So what we can do over here is I'm at the front view and you can see that's flush with the edge. I'm gonna go up two millimeters and I'm just gonna click. And now if you notice in our perspective view underneath, you'll see that cutout. Now one thing you'll notice also is that our rectangle kind of protrudes 
from the side there. So what we can do is we can go ahead and grab that. And I'm just going to pull it back just enough to where it doesn't show anymore. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that curve that we just used to do the cutout. You see it gives me the option to select the curve or the surface. So I'm going to select the curve. I'm going to go ahead and move it up so we can cut away from the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that to right about there. And I'm going to use the make hole command again. And then we'll cut down. So we'll make hole. I'm going to select the surface. And then from the top, I'm going to go down to roughly two, two millimeters. So each one of these blocks represents a unit. So that's one unit or one millimeter. And now we're down to two. And now you can see we have our two cutouts. The next thing we want to do uh, for two reasons. One, just for the aesthetic look of this, is we want to fill at this, these edges. And that's going to give kind of a nice rounded look on each edge. And the other reason is, as you notice, this is kind of a sleight of hand trick. So we want that to be kind of a smooth edge so it's easier to roll that uh, over between your index finger and your thumb. So I'm going to go ahead and use the fill at edge command. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And I'm going to leave the default radius of 1. I'm going to get that side, that side, and that one. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And it kind of gives you a little preview. And I'm going to hit Enter again. And now you can see our handle. If you recall, we made this, this uh, cutaway about 2 millimeters. The actual thickness of a quarter is 1.75 millimeters. That should sit in this cutout rather nicely. Okay, the last thing we're going to do, and this is merely from a design perspective, uh, you'll notice in the version I showed at the beginning of the video, we had a bunch of stars cut out. Now, to keep this simple, I'm just going to do circles. So we're going to cut, uh, let's say, a series of five circles out of this handle. So I'm going to go ahead and use the circle command again. I have the snap turned on so we can get this right centered. Let's do it right here. And that looks about to be a good size. So we have that circle. And what we're going to use is an array command. And it's going to ask us the number that we want to do in the x direction. So just 1 that way. In the y, which is the up and down, we're going to do 5. So we'll leave 5 in there. We're going to select the center. I'm going to click. And you'll notice as I drag down, you can see that it's uh, spacing these equally as I move down. So I'm going to move to right about there and click and hit enter. And if we go back we can see, I'm going to go ahead and select one of these, each one of these individually. And you can see these are at the bottom of our design. So the next thing I'm going to do is use our make hole command. And I'm going to select this handle. And I'm just going to drag up so that we go all the way past the top. And now you can see our holes cut out in our handle. Now the last thing that we're going to do, and you'll, if you notice I click here, or click here. These are separate objects. So I'm going to select both and then use a command called Boolean Union. Now to be honest, I'm not sure if this is actually necessary. I had read previously that it is just to get your objects uh, combined so they print easier. And now you'll notice that we're one solid. Okay, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to select this and we're I think we're ready to print. So I'm going to go ahead and type export and we'll select an STL file and here's a previous coin paddle that I did but let's go ahead and overwrite that with our new design. I'm going to go ahead and launch MakerWare Okay, in MakerWare, I'm going to add the coin paddle we just designed to the build plate. Let's go ahead and move that to about the center. Make sure it's on the platform. And we're going to go ahead and click Make. We're going to export. We're going to save this to our SD card. Call it Coin Paddle. 
yeah, it already exists. I'm going to replace it with the version we just designed. You'll see that MakerWare is going to slice it up, verify it, and then we'll be ready to pull our SD card out, take it to the MakerBot, and give our paddle a print. We have our file on our SD card. We're going to load it into the MakerBot, turn it on. We'll select Build from SD. And then we're going to go down to, there it is, and, and once the extruder is heated up, about 220 degrees Celsius, and at 230, the print will begin. You can see the outline of our paddle and our little cutouts being drawn. Okay, so our paddle took 20 minutes to print, and we're going to go ahead and pull it off. So let's see if I can... Looks pretty good. We'll clean out those holes a little bit. Now one thing to keep in mind, this thing printed face down, and as the extruder came across this area, so it did this outer edge and then did uh, this surface, and you'll notice that these are not completely flush. There was no surface area to bond to, so it was kind of like bridging over this side, but it did relatively well. The other thing we could have done is printed it straight up, and I haven't tried that before, but uh, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I have a quarter, and I'm gonna mash that in there. It's a little tight. That PLA shrunk a little bit. Okay, quarter's in there. I actually put it on a surface and just banged on it with my hand a little bit. So the good thing about PLA as well is you can sand it, so if you ever need to do that, if your dimensions are off a little bit, you can always use that method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upload the coin paddle file to Thingiverse in case you want to download it and give it a print and just learn how to do this trick. And I'll upload the version, this version with the stars on it. figure that has a little bit more appeal for those who want to download and print. So I hope this was useful. This is the process that I've been using to do design for various parts and if you have any suggestions on improving or how to do things better please feel free to leave them in the comments below and if you have any questions I'll be happy to take a stab at answering. Kind of hard to do it at this angle and you can download it on Thingiverse and until next time thanks for watching.